Hi, I'm Landon Witsit. Welcome to Theo Academy and the fourth lesson in our series on the foundations of Presbyterian discipleship. Being Presbyterian is not simply a matter of understanding the world in a particular way. Now, while our previous lessons on God's grace, renouncing sin and evil, and accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior are vitally important, knowing all that information doesn't do us any good if we don't also recognize that we are called to live a certain kind of life. The third question that Presbyterians answer when we join a congregation is this. Will you be a faithful member of this congregation? Share in its worship and ministry through your prayers and gifts, your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. In our final lesson in this series, we will explore an understanding of fellowship and mission, but we'd like to begin here with why Presbyterians hold study and worship as such high values. Along with the rest of the Christian family, Presbyterians are known as a people of the book, meaning we believe that what we need to know about faith comes to us first in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament. But the Bible is a funny book, isn't it? <laughs> Many people sit down to read it and, and come away very frustrated because, because we can't seem to understand how this very ancient book should apply to our very modern lives. Oftentimes, the Bible makes big and, and bold claims, and, and we're left wondering if Scripture really means what it says. And so because the Scriptures can seem so hard to approach and so difficult to understand, a lot of us just simply walk away, and, and we choose not to think too hard about it. My, I feel like my job sometimes is to make the disconnect closer to give them space to be curious about, permission to be curious about, to the point where I'll say, this is what I don't get about the scripture. I, I don't get it. Why did this, why this happen? Do you guys ever wonder about that? And it almost gives them permission to go, yeah, actually, now that I think about it, that doesn't make sense whatsoever. Okay, great. Let's dive into that. Let's figure that part out. Let's explore that. I think that's really where study comes in. You know, I think the old school was here you have someone who will claim to be the professional and the one who studied the most about it, and I'm going to impart my wisdom onto you um, and some insights on how it should apply to your life. And I think it's less so nowadays. I think change is happening so fast at such a, um, a rapid pace that it really, and we all are so much more diverse than we ever have been that to come around a table and to share from people's different perspectives of life and that maybe the most I can give is throw in a Greek word every now and then um, to maybe uh, impart, maybe this is probably the context of what they meant by that, but let them be curious about each other's lives and how the word um, intersects that. That right there is Bible study. I mean, that's right there. That's life study right there. And that's where I think we need to nurture curiosity more, that there is a deep intersection between the Word and our own lives. Once we discover that, that deep connection, we have to figure out how to make it real in our lives. Now, educators have known for a long time that just learning information is not enough. We have to use that information or it all goes to waste. And if we're going to use it effectively, then we need a place to practice. That's where worship comes in. Uh, so the sign outside our, uh, um, my church says, safe, open, real. And I would say we've spent a lot of years trying to create a safe, open, real place in our sanctuary where when people come to worship it really should feel comfortable and safe enough for them to practice what we hear from the word of god and if you can practice that here if we can learn to love and forgive and be compassionate and gracious to each other here then we should be ever more equipped to do it out there we practice here so that we can do it there. 
This is such a powerful truth. I once had someone ask me why we do things like pray a prayer of confession and offer grace to one another every week in worship. I told them it's because there will come a time when we have wronged someone and we're going to need to confess that. Or there will be a time when we have been wronged and we're going to need to make a choice about whether or not to forgive. We practice those things every time we worship so that when it comes time to do it in real life, we will already know what to do. But these moments of confession and grace are going to change over time. We are not going to experience the same moments of confession and grace for the rest of our lives. And it's because we're going to face these new situations, we need to continually go back and re-engage the ways that God would have us to live. You know, we don't live in a static world. I I mean, everything is changing. And everything, I think our faith should be constantly tested. I don't think we should ever come to a point where you feel solid in your faith. Every moment of the day, you should be curious enough where life is testing your faith. If we are not constantly re-engaging with the Word, um, not so that we are going back to like an instruction manual where you're trying to figure out how to work through this, but re-engaging in the Word because as you're going through life, the Word, the insight that you you, um, should get should change as well. Constant epiphanies, constant revelations. Um, And living in the Silicon Valley, Uh, we are surrounded by new technologies constantly. Um, And, of course, being a Mac user, I'm constantly having to update my systems and my apps all the time. And I just find it really fascinating that we don't blink an eye about our understanding that there are people constantly improving and working out the bugs in apps and systems that we are using. And we do not gripe about having to constantly hit update all on our iPhone or our iPads. But we don't go through updating our own faith system. When life is changing all around us, we are constantly working on a belief system from maybe even when we were a child. And what we're finding is that it doesn't work for us anymore. And because then it doesn't work for us anymore, we are that much more quicker to abandon it or leave it, when really maybe what we just need to do is re-engage and update our faith system. Um, and through that, I, I believe then we will be better um, able to then facilitate the ways that we encounter people and life situations in the world. Uh, I have a friend who uh, has been just suddenly was in a tragic accident um, and has suddenly passed away. And during that period of time um, of him being in the hospital, she has exemplified what I think a lot of people have been saying, which is a strong faith. I'm not a strong faith in the sense that she is a rock and that no matter what goes at her, it's just can't break that rock, can't break that rock of faith. Um, I don't think that's how, what people meant by her having a strong sense of faith. Throughout um, her time watching and going through her husband being in the hospital, and in many ways deteriorating, she has exemplified through um, Facebook and updating her status how We've been watching her updating her faith system in a way that has invited people around her to update their faith systems. Um, one of the posts that she she updated was saying that um, she was talking about looking at this one hymn, Watchmen. Um, uh, I can't remember the, the correct title, but it's about kind of... Um, you know, observing and watching in the night and how it is bringing new meaning. She is uh, reading and singing that song in a completely different light and perspective. Um, And since then, I've been watching every day people posting 
new hymns for her to sing in a way that they're saying, I'm singing this hymn for you in a completely different way. Um, amazing grace. I'm understanding that in a completely new way. Uh, be, peace, be still. Understanding God's peace in a completely different way. It has been said that the only constant in life is change. Our lives change. Our circumstances change. Our relationships change. Our understanding of the world changes. Presbyterians are a people who embrace this reality in the full confidence that the God who does not change will guide us through whatever we face. But we have to do our part. We must come to understand that being a faithful disciple means being a growing disciple. And only by updating our faith system will that be possible. We'll see you next time.